4E TV. Thank you so much for joining us. I am here with my beautiful bride, Dr. Michelle, the, the more beautiful side of me, the more intellectual side, but she's a good compliment, don't you think? So we like to say we are M&M without, without the, the sugar. sugar. So you get that. We have a good time with that. We, we harp a lot. We talk a lot. We beat our drum a lot about the, the standard American diet and the detrimental effects it has on our society. So we're going to talk a lot about that today, believe it or not. Today, we're going to talk about a subject that everybody has asked us about on a fairly regular basis, this idea of weight loss. So anything you ever want to know about weight loss and how to really do that and what that really means, they're going to get that today, right? Yeah. It's going to be some cool stuff today. So um, I want you to kind of sit back, uh, get yourself a nice glass of water or whatever you're drinking and just make it healthy, of course, and sit down and enjoy because we appreciate the gift of the time you've given us to come into your homes today. Uh, and just to kind of remind you, uh, as, as I always do, we're talking about this idea of total wellness. You know what the 4E philosophy is about. It's about being physically well, emotionally well, intellectually well, and most importantly, spiritually well. We want you to be well inside and out. When you give those areas uh, attention on a daily basis, you'll experience something called peace. We want you to be at peace every day. That's what we're about. We want to equip you, inspire you, motivate you, and educate you to be all you can be so that you can live in a, a life and a, a, a peaceful presence through the course of your days in this earth. We want you to be powerful. We want you to be effective. We want you to be this vibrant, um, alive thing, this entity that changes things. We want your influence to increase. As the prayer of Jabez, as Jabez said, expand my territories. I want you to expand your territories, expand your reach, not just wide, but deep. To expand them deep requires you to be deep well of health and wellness, and we want you to be that way today. I want to read to you a couple of scriptures um, today, two verses, actually found in the book of Ephesians that I really want you to catch as, as this kind of segue or lead into this idea of weight loss. And, and I want you to turn there right now. I always bring my Bible with me because... Many times, you know, people, we say things to people or we hear things and we just believe them just because someone, who, whether they're a doctor, whether they're a minister, whatever their credentials they have in front of their name, they said it, so we believe it. I want you to check these things out. I want you to verify them. The Bible says we're supposed to test and approve what God's will is. And the only way to test is to know it, to know his word. So we spend time with him. This is more than just a, a, a book. This is more than just the number one bestseller of all time. This is God's word. It's alive yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's just as applicable 2,000 years ago as it is today, as it will be 2,000 years from now. It's God's word. So I'm going to read to you from God's word in the book of Ephesians. It's in the New Testament, about halfway through the New Testament. Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul. And he's actually um, writing this to um, you know a bunch of people that are uh, Christians, but they're kind of scattered, and he wants to kind of encourage them. And, and I want to read to you two verses found in chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. It's a well-known passage of Scripture that's utilized in many salvation uh, messages. And as you know, I'm an evangelist by heart. God's called me that way. So I've used this Scripture many times because it really, uh, God tells us exactly what it takes to be saved. And if you ever wanted that question, you can find the answer right here in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And I'm going to read to you right from God's Word, beginning in verse 8 of chapter 2 in the book of Ephesians. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift from God. Not of works, so that no one can boast. A couple key things that I want to point out to you very quickly is when we sometimes understand faith, we think we have to generate faith. But faith is a gift from God. It clearly, God clearly says, faith, this is not from yourselves, it's a gift from God. So he deposits faith into your life because he loves us. Even though we are sinners, we are saved by grace. Not because we're good enough, but because God says we're good enough through the blood of his son, Jesus. When God looks at us, if we have a relationship with him, he does not see our sin. He sees us as perfectly white in his presence because we are covered and our sin is covered by the blood of Jesus. So by believing in him, 
believing Jesus died for you, believing he rose again, believing he is the son of God, and giving our lives to him, we have that relationship with him. But it's not because of our works. It's not because of anything we can do. We can't earn, merit, or deserve our way to heaven. It's all by grace. Much like the call in our lives that we have, Dr. Michelle and I, our call in our lives, our mission, our abilities, talents, giftings, is from God. It's not because we're good. It's because he's good. He has gifted us to, to teach and preach. He's given us a torch to carry, a light to carry to a darkened world. Our torch may not be the same torch yours is, but when you put the two torches together, it creates a bright light. That's what the body of Christ is about. It's about a, a body that's created by grace to give him glory. So our torch is is about giving the keys of healing to a sick, hurting world. God has given us the keys to change health care. He's given us the keys to empower the church once again. We have neglected the physical peace. Therefore, we have lost our ability to be vibrant and powerful again. I want you to hear me today. It's important you understand that we want you to be powerful, and God wants you to be powerful. He doesn't want you to be beat down, sick, distressed, uh, broken down, depressed, um, all in chaotic uh, mess all the time. He wants you to be alive and vibrant and healthy and strong and courageous. We need each other in this world to be bold and courageous. I want you to hold that torch with us. I want you to carry that torch with us. And I want you to fulfill all that God's called you to fulfill in your life. So with that said, it's all by his grace. We need his grace in every of our lives, including the subject matter of 4ETV today. We need his grace to help us in the area of weight loss. You know, we talk about this weight loss, Dr. Michelle. I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. I mean, people are struggling. I look on TV and I see all kinds of, of weight loss gadgetry. I see pills. I see workouts. I see movements on TV that are flat out vulgar. And people are putting the guise of losing weight like that. I see people on TV that have no clothes on. And they're giving that people the ability that, that they're the idea that you dress like that, you be like that, you're going to lose weight. But it boils down to more than that. We need God's help to encourage us and teach us his ways. And that's what we do. When we talk about weight loss, I want you to kind of, we're just going to kind of dialogue this day because we get asked about this all the time. That's one of the primary functions we have in the clinic. People will come in and will say, what do you want to accomplish? What's your main goal here today? And I hear it all the time. Well, I want to lose weight and I want to feel better. So let's get into this right now. Weight loss. When someone says, I want to lose weight, what's the first thing you tell them? Well, weight loss is a side effect of wellness. There is no such thing as a diet, Mark. Diets, as we well know, diets just don't work. In fact, the standard American diet, with the standard American diet that we see in our society today, obesity is at an all-time high. Not only do we have a population of 30-plus percent adult obesity, we also have a rising percentage of obesity in our nation in children which is absolutely destroying us in terms of the physical peace in wellness. So the standard American diet does not work. And in the clinic, we talk about creating a new American lifestyle. Notice we have dropped the word diet. Nobody wants to die, D-I-E, which are the first three letters of the word diet. We have changed that word from diet to lifestyle. Lifestyle is something that happens every day all the time, everywhere we go, and we never get off the train. When you diet, we have this tendency to believe that when we go on a diet, we just have to do this for a short period of time, like three months or 12 days, and everything is going to go away. But for all intents and purposes, that is not how it works. In order to stay a lean, clean fighting machine, you got to feed the engines of metabolism good fuel every day, all the time. If we don't, we know from that standard American diet that we are absolutely overloading the organs of metabolism. Our livers can't do it anymore. Our pancreas has become tired and our bodies suffer with what's called metabolic syndrome and the end stage of that is diabetes, diabetes and morbid obesity.
you know, you said something right there that I'll probably hit on again. I want us to be lean, mean, fighting machines in the body of Christ. You know, we're not called to be cowards. We're called to stand up and have some backbone. And we need to have some backbone in this area. You know, a little teaching moment here. Uh, when people talk about um, weight loss, we try to shift them in a different direction. We try to talk more about body composition change. It's interesting enough, and, and I don't have models here to show you, but if you can get this concept, if we look at like five pounds of fat mass tissue, it's roughly this um, rectangular shape, this much space. If we look at five pounds of muscle tissue, it takes up about this much space, roughly 30% less spatial density than fat mass. So therefore, things can weigh the same, but be substantially different sizes. So if we add 30% more to this muscle mass, it would take up roughly the same space, equal space in fat mass. Is that, did I explain That's that correct. right? You know, in, in the clinic, we never talk, the pe patients will ask me, well, how much weight do I need to lose? I never look at weight as a component. Weight has to be looked at as, about, as body composition. I language with my patients about understanding body composition in terms of what is their basal metabolic rate, how much does their body burn caloric-wise on a daily basis, what is their muscle mass percentage, what is their fat percentage, and how much water does their body uh, have inside the cells and outside the cells. That tells us about cellular health and the true composition of the body. Now, if you're losing weight, and I've put you on a nutritional plan, I want to watch that in-body or that body composition analysis to make sure that you are only losing fat mass as weight, because I don't want you to lose any of that hard-earned muscle tissue that we have work to put on your system. That muscle tissue actually burns more calories at rest than fat mass does. So if we put you on a lifestyle that is actually burning muscle tissue, we're doing something wrong. So we have a measure to go back and look at, which is that body composition analysis to tell us what direction we're going in as far as is our lifestyle working or do we need to make some adjustments? Now that's, that's a great point because if you really understand that from about the age of 25 on, whether you're a male or female, you're going to lose about a pound naturally of lean muscle tissue on a natural basis as you go through life. It's just called the aging process. It's, it's we're born to die. Our, our physical bodies are born to die. So with that said, as this, this pound goes down, these, these lean muscle pound goes down, there's something that runs parallel to that, and that's our metabolic rate. So with every loss of about one pound of muscle tissue from 25 years of age on, our metabolic rate slows about a percent. So what that tells you is the less muscle mass we have, the slower our metabolism can be. The only way to um, recoup that loss or slow down this aging or decay process is to put on lean muscle. And the only way to put on lean muscle is to put resistance against the muscles uh, and let them recover and rest after the resistance occurs. That resistance I'm talking about the resistance is weight resistance or weight training. You can do that with body weight, with uh, free weights, with bands, kettlebells. There's all kinds of things, some yoga. Uh, but we have to continue to minimize that loss and fight that decay as best as possible because it's going down already. And what Dr. Michelle is talking about, the more lean muscle we can maintain on our frame, that requires more energy. Therefore, we can burn or utilize more fat as fuel because we need more energy. Fat is a wonderful source of energy for every gram of fat through intake of food. There are nine calories units of energy as opposed to every gram of carbohydrate, meaning four calories or units of energy. So with that said, our job, when we have at, the, at FMI, the Functional Medical Institute, we want to maximize lean muscle tissue and minimize excess fat tissue. So we're, we're trying to redefine this concept of, of weight loss. Correct. So we will take that basal metabolic rate and then we will slowly, we will come up with a plan. What we have been trained in the past, the standard American nutritional protocol is usually about 60% carbohydrate, 30% fat, or 30% protein, and then 20% fat, or 10% fat. So it's a 60-30-10 split. What we know is that we actually need a little bit more good fat. We need more of those omega-3 fatty acids.
So we need to kind of move away from being fat phobic. Once we have the basal metabolic rate, which is the amount of calories that your body actually burns at rest, then we will appropriately proportion those calories into our macronutrients, which are our proteins, our carbohydrates, and our fats. And for good starting rule of thumb, take that basal metabolic rate, whatever your basal metabolic rate is, and if you don't know that, that can be gleaned by something called the Harris-Benedict equation, and you can come up with your own basal metabolic rate at home, and then click those numbers into a formula of 40% protein, 30% fat, and 30% carbohydrate. So it's going to really change what we have been geared towards in getting all of those breads and those grains and those high glycemic carbohydrates into a more clean burning fuel process. So the basal metabolic rate serves as our basis for setting up a good plan for weight loss. Of course, we've got to really be aware and accountable of what it is that we're eating. And most of us, I'll ask my patients, well, what is it that you eat on a daily basis? And they, they can't give me a good rundown of what they had for breakfast, what they had for lunch, and what they had for dinner in the day before, let alone what they've been eating on a routine basis in the months gone by. So starting to log those things is absolutely imperative to obtaining good weight loss. And once you have some logs like that, if you're still having trouble and you've also already put it into your basal metabolic rate, your ratio proportions, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats in that 60-30-10 ratio, then it's time to get an accountability partner or utilize a healthcare professional that actually can look at what you might be having difficulty with, and that difficulty might be food allergies, sensitivities, or otherwise. Yeah, and this 40-30-30 this thing is, is much, much different than we are accustomed to seeing. Remember the old food pyramid that had multiple servings of um, whole grains and breads. Um, that, that has been shown time and time again to be a, a faulty system. The, the true system we need to have is, is the 40-30-30 ratio or, or something along those lines. Now we, we also do um, DNA testing to determine the exact ratios you need for, for, for you specifically based on your own DNA. With that said, we can take that ratio and combine that with the amount of calories through the basal metabolic rate we're talking about. And, and when we say Harris-Benedict formula, um, you can find that anywhere. Just Google that, and it'll be a self-working um, self equation. You plug in the numbers, it'll give that to you. But we have once we have those two pieces of information, it's, it's a sense to come up with a nutritional plan. But the idea of people uh, today, they're sabotaging their own weight loss efforts by thinking they can go out and take a pill or exercise to do it. When in reality, it's all about nutrition. I mean, would you say, uh, what percentage would you say weight loss or weight management or body composition change is nutrition? 85% of everything, even your long-term outcome, is nutrition and the gasoline that you fuel your system with through time. So unless we're paying good attention to what we're taking in, we're going to lose the game. We may be thin, but we might be what we call uh, sarcopenic thin. That means skinny fat, in other words. You may have uh, a thin body style, but you're actually uh, fat if we looked at a body composition analysis. That's why I encourage you to get that body composition analysis done because just because you're thin does not mean that you're, you're healthy on the inside. That's right. And if you're around the Tulsa area, come up. You know, we've got a machine that you can stand on and, and get this thing done and, and just uh, you know, takes about a minute or two. It's really important to understand what we're talking about here. We, we need to reshape the, the paradigm of the thinking about weight loss and instead transfer it to um, positive body composition change. That's a much better thing. Weight loss gets us in trouble. Even though the shows glamorize this excess weight, which I think is tremendous, people losing weight, we don't want to lose weight at the sacrifice of lean muscle tissue because, as we stated, the lack of lean muscle tissue slows our metabolism. So we want to maximize lean muscle tissue, uh, minimize excess fat, therefore changing our body composition around to its optimum to maximize our, our metabolic system's effectiveness. So, you know, there, there's a couple little rules that we sometimes give people, and um, they sometimes call, there's Dr. Michelle's four rules again. You know, people kind of know it because we repeat it so much. Can you kind of take people through those four rules and practically what that looks like? 
Yep. So in the beginning, we started to talk a little bit about the new American lifestyle. This is a process that Mark and I have actually come up with in the clinic where we, after we've done that body composition and now we've got you uh, proportioned out into your 40, 30, 30, and we know what your calories are per day, now we actually add some extra rules or boundaries or parameters on that. And even if you don't have those uh, parameters set up before, you can start to do these uh, for right today without having a body composition analysis. And the first thing is, is start your morning off with a protein breakfast. It's very important to get good solid protein first thing in the morning. You know, we usually get out of bed and we go for that cereal, milk, toast, juice. Those are all high carbohydrate and not only are they high carbohydrate, but they're also high glycemic. So they're going to drive blood sugar through the roof. And then in the next 20 minutes to an hour, depending upon your metabolism, you're going to have a sinking spell and you're going to feel weak and tired and you're going to be driven to have the next snack. And usually that snack is sugar-based. If we take our breakfast to a protein base, then it's going to help blunt the blood sugar rise and keep our blood sugar stable until lunchtime. So we start our breakfast off with a protein breakfast. Number two is green salad for lunch. I'm very adamant about trying to get out all of the breads and the pastas and the cakes and the cookies and the candies and the things that are driving metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. And that takes work to get rid of the sandwiches and the pastas and the, and the quick biscuits and things that we do at lunch. We've got to put a green salad in there for lunch and have that green salad with a little bit of protein like a chicken breast or a turkey breast or a lean ground turkey burger, something of that nature. So now we have avoided the bread at lunch. The, the next rule is to get plenty of water. Plenty of water a day is a good way to keep the doctor away. Our bodies by nature are 60% water and if we're running a little bit on the dehydration side, our bodies can't metabolize. We become very sticky and pasty and thick on the inside and things just don't move as easy as they should and some of those things are our joints. So get your water in. I usually say about 70 ounces for women and 90 ounces for men. And you want to get it in at about 4 ounces every 15 minutes. You can't just get up in the morning and get, guzzle down that 70 ounces or you're just going to be right in the bathroom. So we encourage sipping water throughout the day and to make the, those 70 and 90 ounces a goal. And then last but not least, and this is very, very hard because we are a a socially driven society and we don't get off work till late and we eat dinner late and we encourage you to cut the carbohydrates out after six o'clock. Our bodies are designed to, designed to go down to rest after six o'clock and our digestive enzymes are waning just like our minds are waning. So if we're piling food and especially carbohydrates into our system late at night, we are stressing a system and we are also engaging a hormone called insulin and insulin is a fat storing hormone. And if you want to store fat through the night, when the body is designed to be in a fasting, cleaning state, then go ahead and eat carbohydrates after six o'clock. But if you want your body to clean itself and actually improve the engines of metabolism, cut those carbohydrates off after six o'clock. And that includes alcohol. Alcohol is a sugar alcohol. It is a liquid. It does go into the system and it does affect the production of insulin. And insulin is a fat storing hormone. So again, our four, four rules. Start your breakfast with a protein breakfast. Have a green salad for lunch and cut out the breads. Get plenty of water, 70 ounces for men, 90 ounce, 70 ounces for women and 90 ounces for men. Uh, consumed over the, of 20, uh, your daily period in four ounces at a time, and then no carbohydrates after six o'clock. Those are our parameters, which we add on top of our basal metabolic process, which is broken down into our proteins, carbohydrates, and fats in that 40, 30, 30 ratio. I love that. You know, what we've just given you with those four rules, and I'm gonna repeat them one more time, so you can write them down, um, is we've given you a recipe for success. We really have. It, it's about that. We want you to be successful. We want your, your uh, body composition change efforts to be successful for the positive. Practically speaking, what a protein breakfast looks like is you, you want to get a quality protein. It, a lot of times people eat eggs in the morning. Uh, go ahead and eat the eggs. You know, get, get yourself some coconut oil and and scramble some eggs. Uh, some people might be comfortable having a protein shake, but try to get at least 30 grams of protein in the morning. We're talking about a salad. 
every restaurant out there has a salad on their menu. Just get the salad. Get some grilled meat on top of that, like a grilled salmon or a grilled chicken. We talk about water. The practical side of that is make it visible and available. I mean, you know, I will tell you, there's, there's water in this cup right now. We have water visible and available. Get yourself a bottle of water and put it on your bathroom counter, put it in your car and carry it with you. Drink that water throughout the course of the day. And 70 ounces for women, 90 ounces for men, it won't be any problem at all. You'll go over the top and, and it'll, it'll really saturate and hydrate your body well and, and get your body detoxifying well. The hardest thing that we've seen is that no carbohydrate after six. You know, notice she said no carbohydrate. She didn't say no food. That's so correct. Important to know. What are some things people could eat after 6 o'clock that would, would qualify for uh, something they could snack on? A big, healthy green salad. You have a slice of chicken breast or, or ham, uh, clean deli ham. You can even have a protein shake. You can have a handful of nuts. But if you're going to do a sit-down dinner and you're going to have your dinner after 6 o'clock, enjoy those big green salads. Those green salads are where we get a lot of the micronutrients and those micronutrients are what are necessary to drive cellular metabolism. So if our nutrition is devoid in nutrients, we will have a slowed metabolism and we will have an onset of weight gain. So by increasing those green vegetables, it's encouraging that we will start to see weight loss just by changing the nutrient types. Yeah, and just to clarify, in case you're saying, well, wait a minute, isn't the green salad carbohydrate? Yes, it's carbohydrate, but they're, they're low glycemic carbohydrates. They're basically non-glycemic, and they're full of nutrients. So those aren't going to spike your insulin, spike your blood sugar. Uh, those are going to keep your metabolic processes running smoothly. And uh, this is take these four rules, even without exercising, and I promise you, your body composition will change for the positive. You know, we want people to get these things, and, and we, we practice these things. Well, is that all there is? Trust me. That's all you need. We see it all the time. We see people uh, change their body every day with just incorporating these four rules, and they begin to have success. They begin to believe it, and God begins to continue to bless them with new information, of course, by his grace. You know, we've had a great time today, and we thank you so much for tuning in and watching us. And from Dr. Mark and Dr. Michelle, we are out of here. Be blessed and be healthy.